Hi, my name is Heather and welcome to another episode of Cover to Cover Canva Edition, my series where I share my process creating a children's book using Canva elements. I'll include my copyright reminder here and also remember that I won't be going through the technical details in these videos. So if you want some tutorials on how to lay out your children's book in Canva, then check out the videos that I'll link in the description. Here is my client's book, Titan and the Mystery of the Missing Toy. So I'm going to scroll down past the first page that we already did. And then we haven't done the page two yet. I'm going to skip the next two pages that we did last episode. So I'm going to work on page 10. And the text in page 10 says, One sunny morning, Titan bounded into the living room, ready to seize the day. So I picture Titan like running into the living room. And then it says, He reached for his beloved toy, and it wasn't there. And his doggy eyes widened with surprise and he tilted his head in confusion. So that would be like kind of a different scene. So I'm picturing two different scenes here. So I think what I actually wanna do for this one is break it up into two different scenes. So that's one thing that you really wanna pay attention with is the wording in your book. And think about what the text is describing and are they two different things that are kind of conflicting? Like he's running into the room, but then he's also sitting there like wondering where his toy is. That's really two different scenes. So let's go ahead and duplicate this page. So we'll do page 10 and 11, because remember, even is on the left, odd pages are on the right. So page 10 will be on the left and page 11 will be on the right. Now I'm going to delete the second part of this. So this is just the part where he's bounding into the living room. And then in the second one is where he reached for his toy and it wasn't there. And then, of course, we may end up changing like where the text is. But just for now, since it's kind of a lot of text, I'm going to left align it. And here it says it's the living room. So let's go ahead and grab a living room image. So I'm going to go to elements and I'll search for a living room. And I'm going to go into graphics. And then I'm going to find something that looks like a nice living room. This one is pretty cute, and I like that it's like a pretty nice big scene. It has some nice blank space here. Let's make this bigger. Let's have the blank space be where the text is. So I can probably move the text up a little bit. And then we can always add more up here because this is a flat color. So we can just extend the gray up here. And I'm going to do that by just clicking on the page itself. And I'll just change the background color to be the same as that ceiling color. So now we have our text up here. Here's the living room. And now I can just have Titan running in. Although I want him running into the living room and this page is gonna be on the left of the spine. So I actually kind of want him to be running from the left because I feel like running from the right just feels like he's running out of the book almost if this is to the left of the spine. So. I think I just want to flip this because our blank space is on the right here and I'm going to want Titan in the blank space. So let's just take this image, flip it. And now we have a nice blank space here that I can drop Titan in there and he'll be running. So let me go up here. Here's a good one of him bounding. So let's copy this and then I'll just flip it. And let's make him a little bit smaller because he's a small little dog. That looks pretty good. The only thing is he doesn't stand out very much because the carpet is so dark and he's dark. So let's see if we can make the carpet a little bit lighter so that he stands out a little bit better. Let's do edit photo and I'm going to go to adjust and I'm going to go down here and here is the color of the carpet. So I can actually do this color edit. So I'm going to click on this color and let's pull the brightness up a little bit. It does also change some other parts of the room too, like the wallpaper. This does look a lot better though. So let's go with that. The other thing is his head really kind of blends in with the plant and the rug here. So I would love to be able to move these over. 
Although this part is a little confusing because you see like part of the stairs and part of something, but you're not sure what it is. So what I would really like is just to extend the wall and the ground here. So let's see if we can do that. I'm just going to copy the background here and I'm going to crop so that I only get the part of the wall that I want, like not the part with the window or anything like that. If I zoom in, you can see that the lines don't quite match up right. So let me move this over here so that it'll line up and then I'll make this a little bit bigger. Let's hide our guides and now we can really see, oh, I do need to move it over a little more. That looks pretty good. This part right here though, let me move Titan for a second so you can see how these lines don't quite match up. Actually, I'm just going to duplicate this again and I can just kind of move it so that this line matches up down here and then I'll just crop the top. There is so much you can do with cropping, by the way. If you notice, like so much of what I do is just cropping and using just different parts of different elements. Lastly, I just think that this part is a little confusing too. I don't like how there's like a teeny bit of a baseball bat, a teeny bit of a lamp. Maybe we can just move this over a little bit. Let's go to position and layers and let's grab these pieces of the scene that we put together here. I'm going to group them and move them underneath everything. Now let's see if we can just move this over a little bit. So at least you can tell what those items are. Okay, that's good. I think that is actually pretty good. For the second page, I don't want it to be like exactly the same as the page before it. And since this is just describing him being confused and wondering where his squeaky friend is, I think I will just have Titan here with a confused face and a little thought bubble with his monkey in it. And that'll make it kind of different than the page on the left. So let's grab Titan. I think I'll use this one with the paw up because I think as far as like confused faces go, this might be the closest that we can kind of manipulate it to look confused. So I'm going to make him bigger. We're going to need room for the thought bubble. So maybe not that big, maybe like that. And I feel like if he's confused, he's probably not going to have his tongue out. So let's cover this up with a shape. Maybe I'll try a circle and I'm going to make the color match this color. Make it into like an oval. I might need to do two to really cover this. I think this actually kind of works as far as like kind of a confused face, but for his eyes, I think maybe we want some like downward eyebrows. So let's just search the elements for curve, something really simple that we can manipulate. Let's see how this one works. I think it's not bad, but I think it needs to be a little bit thicker. This one might be good too. I think I like that a lot. So let me go to position and here's all of the pieces that I used to make it and I'll just group those, put those where I want them. And then I'm going to duplicate it over to here and use it for this eye. I do think he looks a little confused and worried here, so I think that works. <laughs> now let's do a thought bubble with his little toy there. So I can go into elements and do thought bubble, maybe this one, but I don't really like the outline on it. So let's make the outline white, but then we'll definitely need to have some kind of background color for this page. We could make it the same background color as the wall, or we could make it like a contrasting background color. Let's go with contrasting so that it's just a little more exciting. We could use a yellow because then it'll coordinate with the couch. That's a little bright though. Maybe orange actually, because orange coordinates with the couch, but yet it's different enough. Let's grab the monkey toy and let's paste it. Let's grab Titan. Let's group all of his pieces together. 
and then I'm going to move him over like that. Another thing that might be kind of fun is we can break up this text a little bit. Now, what if we take the part that he said and make that separate? And then maybe we move it down here. That'll take up some of that extra space there. And so then I'll remove it from here. Let's see, is there a good way to kind of place these? So that could be kind of cute. And it takes up the space a little better so you don't have a bunch of blank spots. If this bubble here wasn't so wide, then I think it would work a lot better. Let's try to find one that is less wide and it's kind of more round. This one is more round. Let's flip it. Let's make it white. That'll fit a lot better. I think that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to show you a way that I like to preview my books when I'm working on them so I can really see the spreads a lot easier and kind of get an idea of what the book's going to look like. And I'm going to make some more videos on this in the future, but I just want to give you kind of a sneak peek. If I click share more, scroll down, and if I find simple booklet flip and click on that, I'll go up here and do all pages and do save. And then it's going to import it into this website called Simple Booklet where you can actually see the pages side by side and see what your spreads look like. And I also like to send it to my clients for a preview of the book too. Then I'm going to do view and simple booklet flip and then I'll just click convert. And here we can see a preview of our pages. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here's that one page we designed, and then we still have to do the page to the right of it. Here's the spread we did last week. I do think that looks pretty good in here. And here's the one we did today. I do think that looks really cute. I like it a lot. I can also send it to Karen, my client, if I just click share, and then I just copy the link, and then I can just email it to her and get feedback. This is a really good tool to use, especially because we can't design side-by-side -side spreads in Canva like as we're designing. So it's really nice to be able to see it after. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for joining me as I work on this project. If you have a project you're working on, come join my Creativity Club if you haven't yet and you can share your project and we can motivate each other, answer questions, whatever helps you make progress on your creative goals. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, or as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.